On a multi-pitch route or on a single pitch route where you're climbing in lead follow style, bringing your partner up and then walking off or rappelling, you as the lead climber will have to decide where to belay and how to manage that belay stance. First part of that is deciding where to stop. On a single pitch climb, obviously you're going to the top. That's generally where you're gonna belay, but you still need to choose farther back or closer to the edge and where to build your anchor and how much material you have to extend that anchor might come into play, although you can always use the rope for extension. Um, on a multi-pitch climb, the topo may indicate where the usual belays are, but you're not bound by that. Uh, you can stop sooner if you see a nice ledge, or you can try to go farther and start linking pitches. That can save time, however, uh, it was a mistake I commonly made as a younger, more enthusiastic climber that I would get excited, take the lead, and try to go as far as I could, and I'd end up fighting massive rope drag 180 feet above my partner, past all the nice belay stances, but with not quite enough rope left to reach the next good belay stance, down to my last three pieces of gear faced with no obvious placements for those three pieces of gear. So linking pitches can be fast, or it can end up costing you uh, time. So maybe sometimes consider that when you see a crack where you can quickly build an anchor with the gear you have and there's a nice stance, stopping and bringing your partner up is going to be a really quick uh, way to go. Anyway, deciding where to belay is based on the availability of a good anchor. In this case, a horizontal crack allowed me to place some cams really quickly. If you see opportunities to place nuts, that's a bonus because then the cams are still there for your partner to lead the next pitch and it is nice to have that full set of cams. So whatever you use to build your anchor, that really determines where you stop. You want to be able to build that anchor quickly and safely. And in building it, you want to think about your body position and the rest of the belay stance, your tether and the belay device. In this case, I made some choices to put myself in the body position I wanted to be in. And I see beginning climbers in such a rush to finish the pitch, they feel like they've taken forever, they want to get their partner on belay, they don't take that extra second to think about how to be comfortable, and then they end up bending their back and belaying at odd angles. So I did do a couple of extra things here to make this a really comfortable stance. I've clipped my cordelette instead of to the slings on these cams, directly to the thumb loops. And instead of a figure eight, I've done a bunch of extra wraps and made like a figure 12. So that brought my master point up, which is where I chose to tether. And then I'm using a plaquette style belay device. You could use a variety of things, but I'm using a plaquette and I'm going off the back of the shelf. If I went off the top of the shelf, my device would be sitting on top of this knot and the rope would be rubbing. So I went off the back of the shelf where it's hanging free, the rope won't be rubbing against my cord, and it's a super comfortable working level. There were other choices I could have made. If I'm tired and want to take my shoes off, I actually have enough of a stance here that I could sit, in which case I would have built my anchor a little bit longer and made my tether a little bit longer too, which I'll demonstrate later in this video. In this case, I decided to lean back in my harness. I'm not hanging, this isn't a hanging belay, I'm just leaning back comfortably. I do have enough of a stance here that I could actually stand, but now I'm bending over to belay. The other advantage to me of leaning back in my harness, aside from belaying at a comfortable level, is I can see my partner a little better as he comes up the pitch. So now I'm comfortable, I might wanna think about taking a drink of water, clipping my backpack to one of these pieces, I want to do all that stuff before I start pulling up rope and putting my partner on belay. So this looks great. The next thing to think about is managing the rope. And then the last thing is where you want your partner coming in and leaving the stance. The norm would be to have my partner leading the next pitch. It makes rope management a little bit easier. But if I'm leading the next pitch, I need to know that in advance too and plan my rope management accordingly. A couple of options that I would consider for managing a rope in this stance are the lap coil and the pancake stack. I'll show you how to start a lap coil first. A lot of people will just start coiling. A lap coil is essentially a butterfly coil across your lap. If you just start like this, you end up with a weird strand hanging down in the middle, which I just find annoying. So I take a bite and stuff it in my harness and then start making my lap coils. Now they'll just hang left and right the way I like it. I won't have that strand in the middle. If I can, if there's nothing down there for them to snag on, I'll make really big coils here, that way I have to make fewer of them, which is less work. And assuming my partner is leading the next pitch, we're swinging leads, which would be the norm unless I'm guiding, uh, I'm going to make really big coils, moving towards smaller ones, 
That way, when my partner leads, my partner's end of the rope will be feeding out, starting with the small coils. And that works really well. The small coils feed out well. If I do it wrong, if I have bigger coils feeding out ahead of smaller ones, the big coils tend to wrap the smaller ones and create tangles. So going big to small, assuming my partner's leading the next pitch. And I do want to spend a second at the end of each one, getting the length about right, a little shorter. And I'm placing each coil ahead of the next, keeping them nice and tidy on my tether. There's the middle mark. So pretty soon I'll probably hear my partner say, that's me. Okay, now I'm ready to set up my belay device, which I've already got hanging here. I don't like to pull up all the rope and then have to hold it with one hand while setting up the device with the other, so I pre-rig that. And now before I put my partner on belay, I should pause for a second, maybe take another sip of water, triple check everything. And once I'm sure I'm ready, I'll let my partner know you're on belay. And now I'll just keep making those nice lap coils as I belay, making sure each one is a little smaller than the last. The other option to manage my rope, which is a little easier, is to stack it on a ledge. If you have enough space to do it, a stack is easier to make and manage than lap coils are. And it doesn't take as much space as you might think. A couple of square feet is enough to make a good pancake stack if you're really aggressive about it. A pancake stack is when you stack your rope and just really aggressively flatten it and compact it like a pancake. When I'm doing this, I flake the rope a little differently from how I do on the ground. When I'm on the ground, I pick up big bites and drop them. It's quicker, you go through more rope that way. This is messy and I might lose control of it. So I use a different motion making my pancake stack. I just push with the front hand, rope's running through the back hand, and then I need to really be on it, stomping my rope into that pancake stack. It is okay to step on your rope if you're not wearing crampons and it's not sitting in the dirt. There's the middle mark. And now I hear my partner saying, that's me. Okay, so put my partner on belay. And again, just take a second here to make sure I'm ready before I let my partner know he or she is on belay. And now as I belay, I'm continuing to manage that pancake stack. Here's a different way to manage the same stance. To make my anchor longer so I could comfortably tether in a seated position, I tied a flat overhand instead of a figure 12 or whatever that was with all the wraps that brought my master point higher. I've got my master point down low. I've tethered myself to the master point and I've chosen to belay directly off the master point as well. I can manage my pancake stack really easily with my hands right here. I could make this tether a little tighter so that I'm half sitting in the anchor if I'm on a little sloping thing, but I'm on a big enough ledge here that I'm fully sitting and there's a little bit of slack in my tether. Very comfortable stance. Notice I've gone ahead and clipped the gear to the anchor for my partner to grab and lead the next pitch with. I like to do this. I like to avoid passing gear hand to hand. That's, a, that's usually when it gets dropped. So I'll clip it to my tether or my partner's tether or directly to the anchor here ready for my partner to grab and go. Assuming my partner is leading the next pitch, this stack is gonna be good to go. When my partner arrives, his or her end will be on top, ready to feed out. If, say, I'm taking a less experienced partner up this route, or we've decided to lead in blocks for whatever reason, and I wanna lead the next pitch, it's really easy to do that with the pancake stack. You just dig one hand all the way under there and flip the stack, and it feeds out neatly with your end on top. With a lap coil, it's a little bit harder to do well. 
you need to make your coils in the opposite order. So you start with small coils going to large. And then when your partner is safely tethered, you take that whole coil and flip it onto your partner's tether. Now your end is set to go, feeding out the small coils first.